Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back to the shop, everybody. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend. My name is Andy with Boatworks Today, and this week I want to talk a little bit about a new line of paint that Alexia has recently come out with called their Acrylic Top Coat X. Now, when I say recently come out with, I want to say it's been about a year and a half, year, year and a half, give or take, uh, since it was initially launched. Now, as the name implies, this is an acrylic-based material as opposed to their 501 line, which is a polyester-based. Now, as far as what those differences really mean at a, at a chemistry level, I have no idea. I'm not a chemist, and I'm not going to pretend to sound like I know what I'm talking about. But when it comes to use and application, now that's in my wheelhouse. So now I understand initially this is going to sound like I'm going off in the weeds, but just trust me, everything will come full circle and we'll tie a nice little bow on it at the end of the video here. Now, when we're talking about designing a paint, there's a lot of thought that goes into this as far as, far as trying to you know, nail down what kind of qualities and characteristics it is that you're looking for. Now, when you're doing this, at the end of the day, it really comes down to a balancing act of compromise. Now, as far as what I mean by that, uh, let's just say, for example, you know, what's the one thing that everybody always you know, brings up when they're talking about a, a new type of material, specifically paint? They want to know, how durable is this product going to be? Now, typically when you're talking about durability, that comes down to, you know, they're referring to, you know, how scratch resistant is the, is the material? Uh, what kind of chemical resistance does it have? Uh, how long is it going to retain its gloss? And these are all functions of, you know, film hardness, right? How hard is the film of that paint? Now, this is where you first initially open the door to compromise, right? So let's just say, for example, on, on one side, you're looking for a, a film that is very, very hard. Now, that's going to work out great if you're looking for scratch resistance. It's going to work out great when you're talking about, you know, most likely chemical resistance as well as gloss retention. Where you kind of, you know, kind of fall short then is when it comes down to repairability. Uh, because that film hardness is so hard, there isn't a compound out there that can cut it and polish it out to be able to blend in any type of repair. As well as having a very hard film, that also opens itself up to you know, the, the, the possibility of cracking because boats flex, they move. That's just the nature of how they're designed. So if the paint isn't able to flex and move with the boat, something's gonna give. Now, on the other side of that coin, let's just say we're talking about a film hardened, or you know, a, a relatively soft uh, paint film. Now that's going to work out great as far as flexibility. It's going to work out great when it comes time, you know, comes time to do a repair. You'll be able to, you know, do a little wet sanding, polish it out, blend it in. It'll look fantastic. But the compromise there is, well, because it's a soft film, it's going to scratch easily. It's going to dull, and it, while it may be flexible, you know, it's still going to look kind of shoddy after a short period of time. So that's not exactly ideal either. So at the end of the day, what you're looking for is, is a material that's hard, but not too hard. It's a compromise. So another detail that comes into play when you're talking about you know, developing a paint is what kind of, how long of an open time do you want this material to have? And when I, when I say open time, what I'm referring to is, you know, how long does that paint have to kind of flow and level to that, that nice mirror finish that we're all chasing before the top starts to skin over and all of that flow stops, right? Now, this is directly kind of where the differences between an acrylic versus like a polyurethane or uh, you know, another type of material comes into play. Acrylics tend to have a much shorter open time. Now, this is a detail that directly impacts how, the material, how that paint is best applied, right? So, for example, let's just say you have a, a paint that has a relatively long open time. Well, that's going to open itself up to uh, being very well suited for rolling and or tipping, right? Or brushing. Um, because that material is going to have that time, whether it's 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes or longer. Again, it all kind of comes down to what kind of temperatures and air floats you have. But that longer op open time is going to lend itself for that material to flow and level out. Now, again, going back to compromises here, having that longer open time also opens it up to a, a longer period of time for dust and bugs to settle in. Now, if you've ever done any painting, you know that as soon as you open that can of paint, every bug from five surrounding counties is going to be on your project within five minutes. That, I don't know why, but that's just how it works out. So even though, you know, so the compromise, easy application, you don't need a bunch of special equipment, but you, uh, you open yourself up to the, a longer period of time 
where blemishes can settle in. Now let's look at the other side of that coin. So let's say we're talking about a material that has a relatively short open time. Now on one hand, that's less time for dust and bugs to settle in before the, you know, the, the paint skins over and it becomes tack free, I guess. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also a shorter period of time for that material to be able to flow and level out, which is why you know, material that has a relatively short open time tends to lend itself better towards like a spray type application. Now, there are dozens of criteria that come into play when you're talking about designing a paint, but you know, these two or three that I mentioned here, I think these are the most relevant when, we're, when it comes down to like DIY use. So bringing this back full circle to acrylic X, what Alexiel has come up with is, is a material that quite honestly is unlike anything that I've ever played around with in the past. Uh, to say that it is a forgiving material to work with would be a, a bit of an understatement. Now, when I was in Charleston, I had three days at their training facility. So a Tuesday, Wednesday, and a Thursday. And on day one, really what, what that was all about was just getting a feel for the material and getting the gun dialed in because it's a different gun than what I was used to. So rather than going directly and shooting boats, we were shooting panels. And one of the things that Miguel had me doing, which by the way, this is Miguel. But one of the, one of the things that he had me do was coat this panel and not just coat it, he would say, okay, shoot it. So I had to apply a coat and about a minute later, he would say, shoot it again. Kind of looked at him like he was nuts, but I'm like, all right, well, whatever, it's, these are test panels. Shot coat two. About a minute later, he's like, hit it again, hit it again. And within about five minutes, I, I sprayed at least four coats and no sagging, no running, no curtaining, nothing. Now, this is not how paint normally behaves. You, if you try and dogpile uh, coats, you're going to have curtains on coat number two. And that, that just did not happen here. And even after spraying this material, essentially wet on wet, uh, after 30 minutes, it was tack free. I could touch it gently with my finger, but at that point, the material would have been skinned over to the point where dust, bugs, it wouldn't have even been an issue. Now on your projects, I am not going to be recommend that you dog pile the material on like I did here. Again, these were testing panels. Uh, if you're going to be using this on your project, I would say wait 30, 40, 50 minutes between coats, but this was just kind of a way for them to show me what kind of open time this material has and how, how quickly you can recoat this stuff. Now, another criteria that Alexio focused on with this acrylic X was having a paint with a very, very high pigment load. And uh, in a nutshell, essentially what that means is being able to get full hide, full coverage in fewer coats. Now, when we're talking about going through the painting process per coat, the fewer times that you can do that, the better, as long as you're still able to get the results that you're looking for. Because every time you've got to go through and whether you're spraying or you're rolling, but every time you go through and you're applying a coat, you open yourself up to the possibility of messing something up. <laughs> Either you, you, you miss an area when you paint or when you're rolling it out or when you're spraying it, or you spill something, you accidentally go, you lose your balance, you go to catch yourself and you got a handful of wet material that now you've got to have to come back and fix after it's cured. So the fewer times that you can come back and, and have to apply coats, the better. Now, as you're going to see here in this video, now this is something that I was really surprised with. Uh, typically when you're spraying, you're not going to get full coverage on coat number one. Coat two, sure, you know, that's, that's pretty much expected, but you rarely, rarely, actually, <laughs> I've never had full coverage on one coat. Now, looking at this boat here, we, I think we got, it's a bright red boat and I'm going over the dark blue. Um, I've got full hide on coat number one. That's never happened. I mean, it's not blotchy, even taking a really critical look at it, it's not blotchy, it is full coverage. So now you may be asking yourself, well, what are the real world differences between their 501 and their X line? You know, which one is going to be best suited for my project? Now, without going off in the weeds here, the short answer is it depends. So for example, let's just say you are set up for spring. You have the equipment uh, and you have a little bit of experience. You're set up to do this. Now, just real quick side note, I've done a video in the past doing a compare and contrast between rolling versus spraying, you know, which one is going to be most, most approachable for most people. I'll include a link for that up in here. But let's just say that you are set up for spraying. Uh, between the 501 and the X series, I would tend to recommend the, the X line 
because of the shorter open time. It's, you know, let's face it, most people are doing the spraying, they're not in a controlled environment, they're outside, they've got bugs, dust, all these things to contend with. And when you're spraying, that shorter open time is going to work to your advantage. Now, on the other hand, let's just say you're gonna be rolling this material, and quite honestly, that's what 95, 98% of DIY folks, that's what they choose to do. Now, when you're rolling this material, uh, in that instance, I think the 501 might be a better fit strictly because of the longer open time. You know, you're going to have more time for that paint to kind of flow and level. And if you're out, you know, in direct sunlight, if there's a little bit of a breeze, those, these are all variables that shorten that open time. Um, so having that, that longer period compared to like, say like the X line or the X series, uh, that's going to work to your advantage. Now you are going to have to deal with some dust in bugs most likely, but that's just, it is what it is. Uh, if you're able to paint the boat yourself, you're saving several, several thousands of dollars versus having somebody else do it in a controlled environment. And at the end of the day, with either material, either the X or their 501, you can come back and do a cut and buff on any of the blemishes that you know may pop up. And on that note, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave those down below. I will do my best to follow up with you. And as always, I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you in the next video. This has been a Boatworks Today Projection.